I didn't want to be viewed as gross, disgusting, or whatever, right? I didn't want to have that negative view. And so when I came into the church, I actually lied on those entrance questions, you know? In the baptismal interview? Yeah. About what? Most of it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Saints Unscripted. Jackson and I are here with... Colin Bell. Yes, sir. Welcome, Colin. Maybe uh, before we get going here, so we're going to hear a little bit about your conversion story, I'm assuming, but we really have no idea what, uh, we don't know anything about your story. It's unscripted. It's unscripted. Truly unscripted. But before we get going, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, how old you are, maybe your social security number, things like that. Credit card number, too. I'll I'll go with credit card number. Okay. My name's Colin Bell. I'm from South Jordan, Utah. I'm 21 years old, and I'm the... Only member in my family who is LDS or religious at all. Okay, so where does your story begin? So you're a convert. What Did you go to a church before? No. So I actually didn't grow up in a religious setting at all. Okay. Um, it wasn't until, I think, 2018 when I had really gotten into religion from one of my friends. But up until that point, it had been just not even spiritual i would say just average life you know do whatever you want to do know your consequences and that's it um my parents got divorced and one of the things that kind of came up was the fact that my mother didn't really want me to go to church at all right didn't want me to take part in organized religion she had a bad experience with her parents and so there was that right you know, missionaries come knocking, you know, don't open the door, it's missionaries. <laughs> oh, oh, great. Mormons. That was my life up until, I want to say middle school, high school, right? That's when it really opened up a little bit more because growing up outside of the church, right? You either are part of the church or you're not. And then early on, a lot of kids don't really know, like, hey, accept people. So you felt like there was a pretty firm divide between members oh, yeah. and non-members. Absolutely. Okay. You know? And the Utah thing. Yes. The typical Utah Mormon. For me, I had a very preconceived notion of Mormons are weird. They're crazy. And especially like when you, like for me, I would drive by the temples and it's like, what's going on in there? It's gated off. It's, mm. it's a government conspiracy. <laughs> you know? Just like. Weird preconceived notions like that, you know. So this is, did your parents, you talked about their divorce, was that while you were in middle school or high school? This was probably before I can even remember. Okay. Like, so I, I've never young. had both parents in the same house, except for when okay. one came to pick me up or vice versa. Gotcha. Um, getting into the actual first time going to church, though, I'm on a band tour in Seattle, and on the ferry back, I was having a really rough time kind of dipping in, dipping into bits of depression a little bit. I asked my friend, Aubrey, if, like, she could help me, right? And she's like, absolutely sure. Again, at this time, I wasn't religious at all. She asked me if she could kind of just talk to me about what she believed. We get on the bus to head back to the hotel, and she starts going on. I didn't understand a thing that she was saying. Part of me doesn't even remember what she was saying. I think it might have had something to do with the 12 tribes of Israel. But what I do remember is the feeling that was there. What she's saying is, carry some weight. And by the time we got back to the hotel, right, we were all getting off the bus. And I just kind of look over at her. I'm like, hey, Aubrey, can I come to church with you sometime? And she's like, ah, really? <laughs> you know, I skip ahead a couple weeks and I go to church for the first time. Right? I walk into the chapel and it's just, wow, this is this feels good. Hmm. I ended up going on to LDS.org and requested a Book of Mormon. And when I started to meet with the missionaries, it was dead middle of summer. And I don't want my mom to know that I was meeting with missionaries. So I'd say, Mom, I'm going to uh, meet some friends and whatnot. And I'd take my bike and ride up to the church building, meet with the missionaries, and then come back. And I remember I tried to like hide the Book of Mormon as I walked <laughs> Right? But, uh... Contraband. Yeah, <laughs> you know... I don't know, I feel like it's a lot of pressure for someone in high school to to kind of play, you know, those two different parts of yourself and at the same time, um, you know, pursuing that. 
Yeah, and I I will say there's also a pressure from that preconceived notion of church people. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. I didn't want to be viewed as gross, disgusting, or whatever. Right. I didn't want to have that negative view, and so when I came into the church, I actually lied on those entrance questions. You know, in the but, baptismal interview. Yeah. Whoa, what? I I lied during that. Right. About what? Most of it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like, I, I had come in the totally wrong way. Then this lasted for about a year, that time going to church and whatnot, and then that's when I kind of fell away. Uh, are, are we getting ahead of ourselves here? A little bit. Okay. So I'm going to bring it back. Yeah, let's go back. So you're meeting with the missionaries. Is yeah. Audrey meeting with you guys? Aubrey, she met Aubrey. with us, I think, one or two times, maybe three or four. Okay. Right. And your your mom doesn't know. Mom doesn't know. Um, Are you going to church regularly? At this point, it's something that I'm trying to do, but I'm the, again, I'm the only one in my family who's going. Right. Right. And so I feel very out of place. I'm like, what is this? You know, I know it's something good. Yeah. But, you know, I'm not reading my scriptures. I made it to the Isaiah chapters and I stopped reading hindsight being 2020. Right. I feel like it was because I wasn't fully truthful about everything because I didn't understand the whole concept of the atonement. I didn't understand the gospel at all and so because of that I really just tried to shield myself you know Mm. trying to cover up everything all of my scars all of my dirt if Mm. you will kind of tried to pretend your past self never existed yeah I didn't necessarily get that whole sense of being reborn out of the water but I knew that what I was doing was right so you were baptized when you were in high school? Yes. Okay. So I think it was right before my junior year of high school during that summer in between the two. Okay. So the, so you had to get permission from only one of your parents in that case then? Yes. So I I didn't really bring it up to my dad because he, he's great with the church, right? He he doesn't go to church, but he has his own views. Yeah. Right. He, but he's chill with it. But it came down to my mom because she was the one that said that she didn't want me going to church or anything. Uh-huh. I I had pretty much prayed for God to soften her heart, and that prayer was answered. When I asked her, like, hey, I want to be baptized. I've been meeting with the missionaries for the last month. You know, she was like, you know what, whatever, just don't bring me into it, you know. Mm. Better answer than you thought you were going to get. Yeah, I was, I was shocked. I was like, I'm not going to be reamed. I'm not going to get, like, screamed at for going to church. Wow. So what year was this that you were baptized? 2018. 2018. You lied on your baptismal interview. I did. You were baptized. Uh, what, what, what's left in this story? And is there? I'm hoping that there's a spot where you get to, <laughs> hey, I lied, but I'm going to be truthful about these it, things now. That doesn't come until later. Okay, so, so where do we go from here? During that time of that one year in church up until a little bit later, what happened during this was... I had even been experimenting with my sexuality at the time, right? Because I was lost as a person, yep. right? I was caught between two different sides of things where my friends were telling me, hey, church is stupid. Don't go. You know, <laughs> like nothing that they're talking about is real, right? And so it, it kind of sounds like you're trying to serve two masters, as yeah. as it were. Like you knew that the church was good and that it was... Uh, a good thing for you to be a part of Mm -hmm. but on the other hand you had these other challenges that you were facing yeah and weren't necessarily at a point yet where you were ready to give them up i would i would say that you know because i was had a lot of i'd say carnal desires Mm -hmm. right a lot of pieces where i wanted to give into these things because it brought me security and happiness and i'm going to use pornography for this one because like this is something that I still deal with today it's at the time it brought me that satisfaction right I didn't have to worry about trying to go find somebody that would accept me because it was so accessible right there right and so that's where that came and I I started with that addiction probably 2012 in sixth grade there was that and then bringing that into experimenting with my sexuality with a guy at the time I was able to kind of communicate like he accepted me for who I was rather than a lot of other people 
right? And so I was like, oh, maybe this is right. But there's always something there that made me feel like this is not right. During this year of going to church and suffering with that, I was dealing with all of these things, whether it be alcohol, smoking, pornography, experimenting with my sexuality. I was doing all of this while going to church on Sunday. So something's got to give at yeah. some point. Yeah, and in my weakness, I chose my own desires, right? And so I left the church. I feel like, or at the time, I felt like if there is a God, that he would want me to live my life to the fullest, be as happy as I can be, but little did I know that all these different things were superficial, just a false sense of joy. So where do we go from here? All right. So I hope this story gets... It's it, happier. It gets worse, and then it gets happier. Okay, so, eventually. It's got to get a little bit worse to get a little bit better. Yeah. yeah, it's like a roller coaster, right? So where we go from here is when I had left the church, this was right before maybe somewhere in between three and six months until I left for the Marine Corps. And right? what year are we in? This was, I want to say 2019, 2020. Okay, right? so not too 2019 long 2019 going into 2020. At this point, I'm giving into these desires, right? I'm just living my life to the fullest before I head out. I have a girlfriend. Is she been... No. So she was, what? but... She or her family life. was, but she decided, nope, not my thing. Okay. So you guys but, were kind of in the same boat a little bit. Yeah. Too you know, we're living life to the fullest. Yeah. And then I end up leaving for the Marines, right? I go to boot camp, and at this point, I, I'm i not religious, right? But I shipped out with a couple of guys that were LDS. And at the end of the day, in training, they give you maybe five minutes to get together, pray, do whatever you want. And so I got, ended up going over to these LDS guys and we'd all pray and it was good, but it was just like, I was in that weird limbo state. And this lasted all throughout um, my time in the Marines, right? It'd be something where it's like, I think about it and then it disappears. So long story short, as I'm in basic training boot camp, right? I start developing a little bit of that depression that I had had before. I'm I'm just thinking it'll be better when I get to my next place, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's going from boot camp to MT, MCT, MCT to job training, and then job training to the fleet, right? I'm always thinking, oh, it'll be better when I get there. Yeah. I get there, it'll be better when I get somewhere yeah. else, you just know? And it, again and again and again. Yeah, and then I get to the fleet, and this is where I'm at my unit. I'm doing my job. It's bad. This is where I really consider myself to be an alcoholic at that time. There are nights when I'm drinking just to fall asleep and got back into experimenting with my sexuality at the time and had those same feelings like this is this is not right. Please don't do this. During this time, it was just filled with sin, right? It was drinking, going out and having sex and whatnot and just giving in to all these desires. I wanted to die. I decided I was going to go call my dad. I go out there and I'm bawling my eyes out. I'm on the phone with my dad. And I remember saying, dad, I want to kill myself. I'm pouring my heart out to my dad over the phone. And this is the first time I hear my dad cry. As I said that, that's when I feel like God heard that. Dad, I need help. At the time, I didn't hear it. I didn't know it or anything, right? But God said, okay. I will get you out of here. This is not where you need to be. But somehow I got out and I come back home. I'm like, I'm free. I'm going to live my life, right? And what? where are we now in the timeline? What year is this? So this is 2021. All right. So you were in the military for a couple of years, it sounds like. Yes. So about a year and a half. It wasn't a long time, right? Okay. It wasn't a full contract. So middle of COVID, you're back home. Um. Yeah. So I'm back. I think it was right after it started to settle down a little bit. Okay. Right. But I start connecting with my friends again, you know, but the friends that weren't part of the church and, you know, they started introducing me a lot more into smoking, you know, edibles. Old habits. Yeah. You know, and I was like, oh, this is really cool. You know, started to get into that. And I quickly realized this isn't doing anything for me. I'm still depressed, and I don't know what I'm doing with my life. It wasn't the military 
that was causing that there was something more deep oh, inside yeah. you. It was something way deep inside me. And realizing this, right, I ended up meeting somebody on the internet and we talked for about a week and finally she was like, hey, would you be interested in going to church for the first time meeting each other? And if she'd come me a week earlier, I would have been like, heck no, you know, you're crazy. Mm-hmm. Right. But something about the timing was just like, <sighs> fine. And so went there and it was kind of like going to church all over again. Was right? it our church? Yes. Okay. So it was LDS church, right? I went and walked into the chapel and was, I felt that light again. I was like, oh, wow. I forgot like, what yes, this feels no. like. <laughs> I was like, I forgot what this feels like. Long story short, I started meeting with, or I met with my bishop. I poured my heart out to him and God in repentance, right? I was like, I lied on my <laughs> baptismal interview. I lied about everything. You know, I told him exactly what had happened with everybody in my life. I had this whole repentance process and I, it's bittersweet because I'm having to accept these things and really just suck it up. Be like, you know what? (sighs) Here it is. You know, you had to face it head on. Yes. I had to face those fears of being rejected, feeling criticized, right. From these notions of Mormons judge people, Hmm. you know, Yeah, the shame. And so I had that going on. But for the first time, I had felt truly forgiven, right? It took a little while. Yeah. And it was it was amazing. And then finally, one night, I go on this research rabbit hole of missions, right? Thinking about service missions and all sorts of stuff, you know, because I, like, I was like, it would be really cool to serve, get back into it. Is this 2022 now? Yes, is this okay. is 2022. Last year. Yes. So this is maybe, I want to say July of 2022. I'm getting into it and I'm going through all this research late at night and I get this prompting to pray about it. I get down and I start praying and then a thought came to my mind like, do you want me to serve a mission? Is that where I'm supposed to be? And the spirit came down like the Polar Express onto the eyes, just, whoa, you know? That is a vivid illustration. I was just tearing up. I was started to just bawl, you know, and it was just, oh my gosh, you know, I I need to do this right. Mm-hmm. At that point, I pretty much just I, I switched everything around. I started to see more success in getting clean from all these different things, right? I was told that hey, you got to be no debt, no nothing to serve a mission. I'm like, okay. So I got to pay $10,000 in debt Hmm. quickly. And then I got to come up with another 10 grand to actually go. I'm like, all right, cool. So I pay tithing for the first time. Like, God, please help me. And long story short, I ended up getting out of $10,000 in debt probably within two weeks. Then my aunt says, hey, will you let me pay for half your mission? I'm like, absolutely. And then I told my bishop that. And he's like, well, all right. We'll cover the rest of it. Finally, I submit my papers and I get my mission call. Small story here. The only exposure to this place that I'd ever had was the Book of Mormon musical. And I found a pirated version of it on YouTube and I watched the entire thing. And by the end, I'd be like, wow, it would really suck to serve a mission in Uganda. Take oh a my. guess at where I got called. God. God. Yes, sir. That is too so, good. I have a testimony that God has a sense of humor. And if you ask for help, he will provide a way. When do yeah. you report to the MTC? I report to the MTC April 27th. There you go. Yeah, by the time you guys are watching this at home. Elder Adios. Uganda. Good luck out there. Thank you very much. I feel like... Uh, Emperor Palpatine, when he looks at Anakin and he's like, <laughs> we will watch your career with great interest <laughs> as you go off and serve. But right. uh, we are not the Empire. Uh, uh, I probably... <laughs> 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 done with this case. See you guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>